focus in this book is really not on the dynamics part. It is the design using as much dynamics as you need to know. So, so, so I, I uh, purposely probably will uh, be crude about certain things uh, <laughs> and uh, less than exact about some other things without, you know, crossing the line obviously. A anyway, I, uh, so the, the purpose of the seminar one more time and for the last time is to explain to you and illustrate to you what the code intends you to do when they require you to do dynamic analysis. So pretty specific purpose. Now we try to kind of, uh, sim uh, I don't know if simplify is the right word, but we try to explain this table through this flowchart. I think this is easier to follow. If your structure is in design category B or C, you can use static analysis period. If your structure is in D or F and it's a regular structure, then as long as period is less than three and a half times transition period, you can do static analysis. If it is equal or larger, you have to do dynamic analysis. Now, if your structure is irregular, having any of the irregular features listed in this box, then the structure is treated like a regular structure and you switch to dynamic analysis at a period of three and a half times the transition period. But if your structure is an irregular structure having an irregular feature not listed in this box, which would be for instance horizontal irregularity type 1, torsional irregularity, then irrespective of height, you will have to do dynamic analysis. This is the basic equation of motion of a multi-degree of freedom system. Mass times stiffness plus damping times velocity times stiffness times plus stiffness times displacement is equal to the exciting force. Except mass is not a scalar, it is a mass matrix. The acceleration is an acceleration vector because we have multiple degrees of freedom. Similarly, damping matrix and a velocity vector, stiffness matrix times a displacement vector, and this is a vector of the exciting forces. The exciting forces must be a function of time for it to be a dynamic problem. Anyway, if it is free vibration as opposed to force vibration, force vibration is caused by an exciting force, free vibration is not caused by any exciting force. It could be the result of earthquake ground motion, for instance. Then the force vector is equal to zero. And if it is undamped free vibration, I probably should have said that at the top of the slide. If it is undamped free vibration, then the damping matrix is also equal to zero. So then the equations of motion get reduced to this form. Mass matrix times the acceleration vector and the stiffness matrix times the displacement vector is equal to a null vector as we call it, a vector of zeros. When you do dynamic analysis, you are not only tied back to static analysis, you are even tied back to the approximate period of the code. You never get away from that because the static base shear is dependent on the approximate period. Even if you have done rationally computed period, <laughs> there is a limit on it which, is, which ties you back to the approximate period of the code. So once again, unless and until you have decided to do nonlinear response history analysis, you never get away from the static, equivalent static approach of the code, nor can you get away from the approximate period formulas in the code. Let us say practical design example of a 20-story reinforced concrete building. 
that we designed specifically by 2006 IBC. As I pointed out in the book, there is 2009 IBC and ACI 31808 section numbers. But on the slides, there was no point in going to all that level of detail. A building is located on IBC site class D. That tells you the, the soil. The dynamic lateral force procedure is used as the basis of design. Comparison with design forces given by the static lateral force procedure uh, and, and that, that is not a matter of choice. I mean, as, as I tried to point out, this is something you are required to do by ASE 7 requirements.